Welcome to the introductory session of CloudFormation. What we do with CloudFormation? Well, we automate and maintain the state of our AWS cloud resources. Sounds similar or familiar? If you have gone through Terraform project videos, or if you already know Terraform, then yes, it may sound similar. And both the, both, both the tools have all similarity in most cases, except for one big difference. CloudFormation is specific to AWS. It's an AWS service, whereas Terraform supports many other cloud providers. There are so many blogs that compares the difference between CloudFormation and Terraform. And you can check them in if you need help in making the decision. But as per me, if you want to automate and maintain the AWS cloud infrastructure and you need AWS native service to do that, then you can go with CloudFormation. But if you want more than AWS, you want some other providers also, then you can go with Terraform. Let's understand terminologies in CloudFormation. Templates. Templates are really the text files or you can say the scripts of CloudFormation, but they are really not scripts in any programming language. You can write them either in YAML or JSON format. So CloudFormation will read this template as an input and the output will be the resource that it will create and maintain. You describe the state of your infrastructure in these text files. Templates, they are called. So if you're comfortable with JSON, you can go with JSON. If you're comfortable with YAML, you can go with YAML. I recommend YAML because it's much easier to read and write YAML. So what template does is it creates and maintains the stack. So you want to create any resource or maintain any resource on AWS, you write template file and CloudFormation will read that and create a stack for you. If you want to make any change to your resource, like for example, security group rules change. So you update your template and then you update your stack. So your stack will read your changed template and make the changes or create or update your stack. Stack is basically a single unit of multiple resources or even it could be a single resource as well. Like you want to create EC2 instance, S3 bucket, RDS, you can put all that in your template, which will create a stack for you. Right. So you can say input is the template and output is the stack. Change set I want to highlight very initially because when you maintain the state of your infrastructure through template, you can very easily make changes. You can update your stack by updating your template. Before you roll out that changes, you can call for a change set. You can generate a change set. So change set will detect the difference between what you what was the state and what you meant and it will show you the impact what impact will happen if you make all these changes this is a very very important thing for live systems for productions for example if you have an rds and you're renaming an rds which is very easy to render a template file it's a text file you can very easily change the name right but when you roll out that change in RDS, it's going to create a new RDS instance and delete the old one. So it will delete your data. Right. So if you have gone through a Terraform plan, it's similar to that. So you plan first, you, sh you show the change set, how it's going to impact. If you're good with it, then you roll out. Or else the result will be data loss. Okay, now let's understand the template anatomy. Now that's everything really of cloud formation. You really need to learn the template. So it supports JSON and YAML both. Let's see first JSON. Okay, so that's in JSON format. The first thing you have is AWS template format version. This is what you have to describe. This is not mandatory. This is optional. All, all of them are optional except resource. Resource is the only mandatory section in your template. Version is optional. Description, you can give some description about your template. It's going to be a string. Metadata, some more information about your template. Parameters, if you want some input parameter when the user is creating the stack, like key pair or select a security group, you can mention that. Mappings, so it will be the mapping of key value pair store, like a dictionary in Python or a hash table or a lookup table. In Terraform, we create a variable of type map. So it's similar to that. So you know, based on a condition, you can pick up the right value. 
talking about conditions that's the next thing conditions you can specify a condition and based on if the condition is true it can create the stack or make some other decision transforms are good for serverless application where you can specify the version of aws sam resources the only mandatory property over here where you define the resources ec2 instance or load balancer or s3 and their properties output if you want to print something out once your template is created or while it is creating so these are the section and except resources all of them are optional and mostly we just give a little description and resources and if we want we can print something and of course the parameters these are regularly used things okay same thing in a yaml format much easier to read okay and easier to write also okay talking about resources the most important thing and this is what actually makes your real stack in json format so resource value in json format is again a dictionary you give a logical id this will not be the name of your resource but you know it's a, it's a reference in your template this is not going to be the name of the resource that you create like if you're creating an ec2 instance logical id if you give over here like example instance so the instance name will not be the example instance it is just a logical id to refer in your template so you say resource and then you can say like for example some name over here and then you say type resource type inside that resource type will be ec2 instance or s3 bucket the services that you want to use and then properties of it like for s3 bucket any key that you want to create any encryption that you want to enable and that is in yaml format and we are going to use yaml format only you see much easier to read and much easier to write okay resources with some example so i want to launch an ec2 instance so i'm going to say resources and it's case sensitive our capital the resources then you give a logical id whatever name you want to give type aws colon colon ec2 colon colon instance and then properties so properties like image id instance type availability zone vpc security group key pair all this will be the properties and it's all available in the documentation aws has all the great documentation as always for its services cloud formation documents are also documentations are also very good they're both in json and yaml format if you see yaml looks much better let's take a look at the documentation okay some sample from aws documentation of cloud formation so aws documentation cloud formation user guide okay you can find your resource like what you see right now is elastic ip okay so i'm gonna scroll this up so you can read about it what this resource is for syntax you can see this is in json format and that's in yaml format properties domain instance id and you can see all the properties and their values that you can give instance id type is a string is it required no this is not mandatory right so all the details are given tags and what it's going to return return value for reference examples i directly jump to the examples and so example in json format and example in yaml format so like this you can scroll through all the resources that you want so i'm checking for ec2 you can check for other things ecs eks elastic cache all of this so won't be a big trouble to write really cloud formation templates okay one more example s3 bucket so resources a logical id like my i'm giving like my s3 bucket type aws colon colon s3 colon colon bucket you can get that from the documentation for your resource properties and you can find all the properties in the documentation and what value you can give here i'm giving bucket name some bucket name access control publicly read web configuration values another dictionary so web configuration then indentation index document in the document so this resource is going to create a bucket name chamomil public read access and it's going to put this file for the website configuration okay let's see one more example for security group resource or logical id type again get the security group 
resource name from the documentation properties and you can find all the properties like group description you can give its value is a string group name its value is also string security group ingress so ingress value ip protocol tcp from port you give the port number to port you give the two port number cider ip and you can give the ip address i know you're thinking it's it looks more similar to terraform right so if you have if you have some hands on one of the tool or even if you have hands on ansible you can learn these very easily right so i think that much introduction should be fine let's jump into our ide and start writing some code